All right, well, here we go with part two, and I want everybody to understand, you have to watch it from the beginning to the end to actually get the representation of where I'm coming from in my own thoughts, all right? My craft of the mind. And if you don't watch it from the beginning to the end, or part one, bars in themselves, everything that we see is circular or curved, all right? Our orbit, or, or, our orbit around the sun is in a circular or curve, part two, part three, however many parts I end up doing, you're gonna miss the exact essence of where this is coming from. So stay tuned and hey, here's the next part. Curved motion, okay, around the sun. Looks like some Tai Chi shit happening, but that's all right. All right, our solar system rotates and spirals and curves throughout our galaxy and our galaxy which we have not actually seen our entire galaxy but other galaxies that we've observed also move in the same curvature all right which would dictate to me that we could actually live in a curved type universe or a looped universe is it expanding probably so I don't know it's exactly what uh, show it was that I was watching here recently, but they, they brought up an interesting idea and had nothing to do with this. But if we do have multiple universes, or if we have different planes or places that we could go through wormholes, black holes, or whatever, then a curved universe would work much better than a flat universe, which there are no points A to point B. Okay. In Hawking's and other scientific theories, uh, Einstein even touched on it a bit that you know we could actually be uh, everything has mass, everything has volume. Okay, that's the thing. Pretty much to put it simple to people like us, everything has displacement, whether it be weight, gravity, a magnetic field, whatever, disperses or displaces around it whether it be the magnetic field or whatever, all right? So that's where we get wavelengths or curvatures to anything, all right? Even if you go off of Einstein's theory that, say you have a fabric in space and you sit the earth in it and it makes that indentation. I don't know the exact name of it, but I'm sure somebody will let us know, all right? Now, let's move one step further and I hope I'm not skipping anything. If I am, you know, I might have to come back and retouch this because this is is, in, is very interesting to a lot of people and I want to get it right but me seems to me like 10 minutes goes by so quickly with me alright so let's take this one and let's say that we can split this universe right here without taking it apart alright without manipulating it in any type of way to take this curved universe apart and let's say that we do have multiple universes let me show you what happens when that uh, takes place. All right. So, if we were to take our curved single universe or maybe even a There we go. This right here would be good. Let's say that we do live on a curved plane, okay? And what I did was without taking it apart or anything was to split our space-time or our known universe into two universes okay and as you can see we still have the points uh, here all right here and here to where there may be multiple possibilities to get from one part of the universe to another that's what this is all about now time in itself anyone who doesn't believe in the space-time formulae or theory really doesn't are not going to be able to conceive where I'm coming from with this okay time does exist because of the just a wave in itself you could take a phase wave you could take a uh, differential phase wave or a phase difference between two objects or two universes okay let's say these two are a perfect example here's one think about track stars okay Let's say that these represent identical, which they are to the most point, or most part. These are two identical universes, okay? 
let's lay the universes to the side for a moment and let's think about a track, a racetrack, running racetrack, okay? And you have two runners that are running at the same speed and they started at the same time, okay? But on a track, the runners actually start from different positions, okay? But they leave at the same time. Now, at some point in time, as they're going around the track, they're going to come back to the starting point or the finish line. And we can just say that that represents here. All right. And if they're moving at the same speed, they're actually going to meet up or come back to that starting point. Even though they're at different positions, they're going to end up at the same spot at the same time because of when they started the race to begin with, which would be a phase difference. All right, the difference in positioning, which would represent the two universes in their positioning as well. Knock that back over here. All right, so they're in different positions, but they're still in the same space time or same phase difference of time. All right, now you could take this one step further and say that, well, if we live in parallel universes or, you know, similar universes, and there is a, such a thing as space-time or time travel in itself and we have different points, what would happen if you know, we have this linking together, then that would dictate that if we can link together and there's different points in time without manipulating this or whatever, I'll come back and show you what I'm talking about as far as the next part of this. Okay, so there's the one universe, and that universe right there, let's say that that universe is started at the same time as the other one. There we go. Now, okay, so now we have different points in time from the same where we began the same flat space or wavelength. Now, you can represent this any way you want to. I'm just holding it like this and say this one's a universe and this one's a universe and this one's a universe and, and so on and so forth. As you can see right here, we have four different universes, but all of them have a common place which is right there starting point okay could we then theorize that this right here in the center you see where I'm looking is the beginning of time possible okay it is possible and for it to you know expand in the way it does would still dictate that we have a starting point okay we started with a flat wavelength. We ended up with multiple possibilities, which I could keep doing this and keep doing it until I ran out of uh, area to cut it, but we would still have a common starting point, okay? Which would dictate that space and time in itself does exist, it does have possibilities, and it does have intersecting areas in it that we have not yet discovered or released to anybody who might be interested. So what does this represent really? Is that I say to you, Zong Chair, infinite possibilities. The last part of what you were talking about, about the train station, this could represent the train station in itself, okay? Where you have a curved universe but it always comes back to the same point in time that it began, which would be taking on the other theory, which is that time travel is possible. Now, let me put this to the side, pause it for a second, we're gonna come back with the next part of the series. All right, now where does the universe and time travel and all of the flat planes curved and everything else tie in together, well, it all comes back to this, humanity. 
Humanity, time, existence, history, all of it. The Bible, Penn and Teller, freaking thoughts of George Carlin, and thoughts of even a psycho like myself. And all of it is going to come together, I hope, if I do this series correctly, to everyone out there and give you the idea that there's always infinite possibilities. There's always a chance of something existing. And I'm not trying to gain any fame or anything off of this. I just want everybody out there in the Craft Chess Nation and anybody else that stumbles across this video to know that there are always possibilities in anything. Never doubt, especially yourself.